In the American state of Texas, from September to December, the weekday minutes pass slowly. For fans, coaches and players across the Lone Star State, there's lots of time to kill between high school American football games on Friday nights. We run out of our tunnel, our band booming our school song. I mean, the crowd goes crazy. Your body is going crazy. You just sprint out there and, oh, it's an, it's an amazing feeling. You know, our stadium holds about 10,000 people and every Friday night, you know, there's 10,000 people at the game. And uh, it's a tremendous atmosphere and a tremendous electricity in the air every Friday night. It's just a way of life here in Texas. It, you grow up with it, and I think people love it. It's the fiber of Texas. Football on Friday nights is a part of Texas. In 1990, the book Friday Night Lights was published, an account of one turbulent season for a Texas high school football team. The non-fiction classic told the rest of the country what Texans already knew, that in this huge state, American football is more a religion than a sport. And nowhere is that clearer than in high school. It was November 2004 when we travelled to Texas to meet up with the fans and players of South Lake Carroll and to understand more about the passion that exists for high school football in this part of the United States. It takes a lot to prepare to win a game, and I want our kids to, to, you know, to go out and win. And sometimes in this community, winning is not enough. You know, sometimes you don't win big enough. Sometimes you don't score enough points. Sometimes you don't have enough yards. Sometimes that's that's uh, unfortunate for our players, but they handle the expectations. South Lake is an affluent Dallas suburb. In 2004, its senior high school was home to over 2,000 students. Academically, it was one of the strongest institutions in Texas. Under head coach Todd Dodge, the Dragons were also the nation's number one ranked high school football team. Given the logistics involved, high school teams from different states rarely play each other. Consequently, comparing them is difficult. Whatever the merits of the rankings, though, everyone agreed that even by Texas standards, the Dragons were something else. Their program had remarkable resources. The school boasted, for example, this indoor training hall. The artificial turf was so high-tech that the NFL's Dallas Cowboys even hired it for their own use. Since 2001, the school's teams had played their home games at Dragon Stadium, a $15 million facility with a capacity of 10,000. During this Thursday night game, with the school's second team playing, spectators were sparse. But for every Friday night game, the stadium was full. And for the 17 and 18-year-old boys we met, that was quite an experience. Before the game, your body gets intense, you get a lot of adrenaline. During the game, you're having the time of your life. You're out there with all your best friends, with thousands of fans watching you, cheering you on, playing football. High school teams become a focal point for the communities around them, with interests not restricted to parents of students. In South Lake, these men formed the so-called Dragon Council, the team's superfans. They would travel across state to watch them play. I came to South Lake in 1978. Daughter was in high school at the time and graduated in uh, 82. And I've followed them ever since I've been here and uh, only missed one football game in the 20 some odd years and uh, that was because she got married. So I went down to Houston for the wedding, which makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? The support the Dragons enjoyed was extraordinary, but with it came a relentless pressure to win. It was easy to forget that these were teenage student athletes. A few months prior to our visit, South Lake Carroll became the first high school team to have a game broadcast nationally on television. That led some to wonder if a sense of perspective had been lost. Coach Dodge, himself a star quarterback in Texas at high school and college level, 
didn't agree with that. This is the best time of their life, between the time they're 14 years old and 18 years old. I tell them all the time that, that, that the, you know, when we have team meetings and those 65 players are in the room, I tell them to look around at each other. Those are going to be life friends. They don't really realize that right now. Friday night and the final regular season game of the year. The Dragons had already clinched a playoff berth, but that didn't mean they'd ease off. Nothing less than a convincing win was expected. On this night, Southlake travelled to nearby Birdville Stadium to face the Rebels of Richland High. As usual, Carroll were overwhelming favourites. Dodge had a reputation as a quarterback guru, and it wasn't long before his Dragons unleashed their firepower. Pass is complete to number 15. The football season lasts only three months, but for powerhouse schools like Southlake, preparation was a year-round activity and the basis of success. The school produced few outstanding individuals who'd prosper at elite college level. Instead, it developed year after year a team of players with exceptional dedication and discipline. They maximized every ounce of their talent to excel at high school and high school only. On this occasion, the rebels were outclassed and routed 61 to 14. The following month, the South Lake Carroll Dragons reached the state final. They won their fifth state title and were hailed as the National High School Team of the Year. I'm going to remember high school football forever. I mean, we're a family and that's something that we know we'll think, we'll think back on and just say that was one of the greatest moments of our lives.